All right, so what I'm going to talk about today is web conferencing. I think some of you have probably done this already. And web conferencing is basically, hold on a second, where you and a group of people meet remotely, so to speak, uh, online in a room, and you get to chat and show things to each other. And you, know, you might be asking the question, well, why, why even bother with web conferencing in an academic setting? Well, theoretically, you could use this to remotely teach a class, but that doesn't apply to most of us. Although I will say a couple years ago, when we had that big ice storm and SMU was closed for a few days, I did use this technology to actually teach a makeup lecture. But uh, for my use, I primarily use this a technology to have help sessions, like for exams. Because the problem I run into is I'll say, okay, let's schedule a help session, you know, Tuesday at four o'clock in room whatever. And then like half the class will say, well, I have a lab then, or I have to work, or I have to go home or whatever. So it's difficult finding a time where everyone can meet. So usually I schedule these online help sessions at night. So I just did one this past Sunday at eight o'clock where I figure not many people will have other things going on. You know, Sunday at eight o'clock, the another benefit is with these web conferencing sessions, you get to record the sessions. So if for whatever reason someone can't make it, they can watch the recording later. So SMU now has access to this go-to meeting. And to get access, you just send a little request to the help desk and say, hey, I'm a faculty here. Can I get a license to go to meeting? They'll send you something. You log in. And with this license, you have access to go-to meeting and what's called go-to webinar. Now the difference between the two is GoToMeeting is limited to 25 participants, but you can have like webcam and the chatting interface is a little bit nicer. GoToWebinar is not as interactive, but it's still pretty effective, but you can have up to 200 students in that one. So you have a large class, for example, I have 98 students in my organic chemistry class this semester. I can use GoToWebinar instead of GoToMeeting. And what you can do is once you install the software, I'll just demonstrate the basic steps. If you, this is a PC, and if you go to the uh, system tray, you'll see this little flower thing. Do a right click, and you have the ability now to schedule either a GoToMeeting or a GoToWebinar. Now, if you schedule it in advance, they'll send you an email, which you forward to your students saying, hey, click this link when the time comes and you get to the conference room. But we can't do that now, so I'm just going to go ahead and do a webinar now, and I'm going to require your participation if you have a laptop. So I hit Webinar now, and I have to log in with my information here. Let's see what happens. So it creates this webinar. It's going to create this little window where you can have the room. Okay, here we go. So this is what you would see as an instructor. It's saying something there. So I'm going to invite you all. So I'm going to expand my attendee list and go to Invite Others. So if you have your laptop and you want to try this out, just go to joinwebinar.com and enter that nine-digit webinar ID. And as you log in, I should see your names there. Now, you don't have to use your, your name. You could make up a name, and I tell my students that because I find that in this kind of setting as well, they're more apt to ask questions where they wouldn't be face-to-face. -face, you know? So if I let them log in anonymously, they can do that. They feel more comfortable with that. If you do that, just be prepared for some very interesting names. But let's see what we have here. Okay, so it may take you some time if you've never done this before to, for your computer to, I guess it's, I think it's Java based or something like that. And you may, if you log in, want to turn down your speakers because otherwise we're going to have a lot of echoing going on, I think. Okay, maybe there's a delay here, so I'll just wait a little bit. But if you look at the rest of the control panel on the right, there are various windows for chat, questions, polls, audio, and things like that. And I can also show my screen to whoever is remotely logged in. So how come I'm not seeing anyone? Is no one logging in here? It's taking a while? Okay. All right. Shit, I've lost my wireless. Great timing. All right. Well, I haven't, but I'm sorry. What's the email address I'm supposed to enter? No, no, you, you go to joinwebinar.com, and then enter. It should prompt you for a webinar ID. And you enter yeah, and it sends me for email address, too. You can, you can just put whatever you want. You don't oh. have to use your SME email. Just use whatever you want. And then it'll oh, go through the process of bringing up the window. And it just sends me to the website. 
Is there so something you know, have to do? No, it stays itself on your desktop and you have to... Oh, right. Okay. All right. Well, I hope it's all like... Oh, here we go. I see one person. Thank you, Brian. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is, while everyone else is going through this, I'm going to show my screen. So I hit this play. And I'm going to start the broadcast. Okay, I got some more people in here. All right. So what you should see now is actually the whole full screen should be just the web page. You probably don't see my little control panel there, right? So at this point, I can do whatever I want. I can go, for example, to PowerPoint and start a slideshow. Yeah, you might want to turn down speakers because my voice will start coming out too, I think. <laughs> So here we go. Now you might think, well, hold on a second. My little control panel is obscuring that, so you can kind of hide it. And then this is a tablet PC, but you don't need one to, to operate this thing. You can go ahead and, I can hear my voice there, annotate on the PowerPoint slide. So you should be seeing whatever I'm doing on my PowerPoint, right? And this is how the help session goes. Now to ask questions, what I can do is expand this, and if you want to ask a question, you can go ahead and do that, and it'll show up in that little box, which I'm going to relocate in a nicer location, like that. And questions show up there. There's, I have a question, Brian has a question, and so I'm waiting for Brian to type his question. Now, with GoToMeeting, you can actually have the participants talk to each other, but usually I find that students prefer to use just type chatting. And then if I see a question, what I'll do, I'll just answer it uh, using my voice. Can I use a camera with this? You can use a webcam. If, if you're Brian? OK. You can use a webcam with GoToMeeting, not with GoToWebinar. OK? I think there's a bandwidth issue there with up to 200 people. So you can use a camera for GoToMeeting, but if a larger class, GoToWebinar, you can show whatever else is on your screen. That's okay. I'm going to discard this. So, for example, I'm going to go to a PDF. Paul mentioned PDF annotator, which allows you to write on PDFs. So I can make comments on here. I'm just scribbling, obviously. But as I'm doing this, you should all see this on your screen at the same time. So basically what I do is I go through previous exams over homework problems, and they get to see whatever I show, and then I get to answer their questions as they come up. I mean, there's a, okay, here we go. I see some more questions here. So let me bring up my window. Hey, I still hear my voice out there, which is very strange. Uh, what did you use to create the red line on the screen? Uh, the one I was scribbling with? OK, so that was just PowerPoint, you know, the little annotation feature in the lower left. You can do that. You don't need a tablet PC. It's, it's a little bit nicer if you do, because you can write a little bit better. How do you get your document into the program? So. You're not actually putting the document into the program. You're just showing whatever, whatever's on your screen. So if you want to open up Microsoft Word, it'll show that. If you want to open up your browser, it'll show that. So you're not actually incorporating anything into the, the web conferencing scheme. So everything that's on your yeah. Now, alternatively, you can change that. You don't want to show your whole screen. You can show a particular application. And then they'll just see that application instead of your whole screen. So you have options. If a bunch of things open, you can show just those and not necessarily your whole screen. Uh, students, when they type in questions, I'm guessing that you guys are all seeing those questions as they're piling up. Is that right? Oh, no, you're just... No, I just see my own questions. Oh, you just see your own. Okay. I'm thinking, I wonder if you can change that setting. In GoToMeeting, I think you can make it much more interactive where everyone sees that. So I don't know the, for sure the answer to that one. And yes, yeah, so... You can use your mobile phone here, and I'm going to try to hurry up a little bit. So for example, but I, will have, I will say something about this. This is Android. Notice the ratings there. Uh, there's a lot of them that are one star, so I don't know what the deal is here. So I know it's available on the iPhone and Android where you can access the meeting through your phone, uh, but just you might want to read some of the reviews to see what kind of problems people had there. Okay, there's some five-star ones, but then there's a bunch of those one-stars, so I don't know. So anyway, this is how the technology works. I didn't mention here, but if you look at my cursor there, there's a start recording button there. If you use a Windows machine, you can record in Windows media format. If you use a Mac, you'll record in MP4. I think these are formats that everyone can work with these days. 
And uh, there's, you know, my students just basically, they just need a computer and an internet connection. That's it. You know, so I'll send them. Here's the information. We'll meet at 8 o'clock Sunday. They all log in. We do the review session. I record it. We go home, or you should already be home, actually. <laughs> and then uh, I post it the next day for the other students. So another nice thing about this is, you know, you don't have to look that great at home, unless you turn on the webcam for whatever reason. <laughs> but you could just, you know, kick your feet up and relax and do this from home in, in the comfort of your own room, right? I'm sorry, how are people asking questions? Uh, okay, the student interface, there should be on the right-hand side a little question box. Do you see that on there, maybe? No? Now, this, this is the instructor side, but uh, you should see something there that allows you to type in a question. I'm, I actually, I'm not that familiar with the Mac interface. Okay. Oh. Thanks, Barb. Yes? How does it compare with WebEx? I've never used WebEx myself. I mean, I've used WebEx you know, when someone has helped me. It looks very similar. Yeah, I think there are a lot of very similar technology. There's something called Blackboard Collaborate, which I still use as well. Um, Adobe Connect, I think, is also very similar. So, they're all competitors. Yeah, but this, you know, as an individual faculty member, you can get for free through SMU. I don't know what it costs SMU, but Brad told me before it's not that much, right? A fraction of yeah. The Cost from retail because we do business with the Citrus. Right. It's a great discount. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's for free, so why, you know? Can students download it for free as well? Students? Yeah, because you need, you obviously need, I needed to download something when there was a, something I had to download. Yeah, but if you're a student, though, you don't have to pay for it, I don't think. Right? Right. They should you just pay You said that correctly when you uh, introduced it that if you want a license, you just call the help desk. The license is for setting the meeting up, and that's all that's required. When the student or the participant gets the invitation, they do need to download a little client, but that's for, that's free. That's just to make the interaction. Okay. So and ultimately, the student will have student the experience you just had. I mean, how do they know where to go to get? They're on. They're connected to the internet. So, uh, like when I. I uh, typed in to get to here, um, it, it automatically downloaded the app on my laptop, which made this all work. Yeah, and if you write and join. You need yeah. to yeah. enhance the link. Right, yeah. no, I understand that. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and if you schedule one in advance, you send them an email with instructions how to join that conference at that given time. One way you could try it, you know, would be to, to request a license and have someone help you and you could do virtual office hours. Something right. really fun, easy to do, and I think your idea about help sessions is a great way of doing that. The practice, I set on my laptop next to my desktop computer. I make my desktop be the student and my laptop's the instructor so I can see what each one is seeing and then get, to get a good feel for what's going on. Yes? So do you need a license to get the license each time you set up a license? No. It's, like it's a one-time one, thing, right? And then you have it, and then you can set it up. We, we do have a set number of licenses. They cost us a few hundred dollars a piece. Um, but because they're relatively cheap, we'll buy more if the demand it increases up to a certain point, obviously. Yeah, but for each session, you don't need to reacquire the license. Mm -hmm. So I just asked for a license last fall, and you know, I've never had to ask for another one since. Could just email the help desk if you want one? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think in the interest of time, I think we do need to move along. I'd be happy to answer any questions afterwards, but Scott's next.